Welcome back. You'll remember we were looking at this Zossi MVR and camera system. And I paused a few weeks ago because I'd found a serious security issue or several serious security issues in this system. I've tried reporting these to Zossi um, and it'd be fair to say they're not really interested in fixing them. They say it's not a problem. I think these two issues are problems. So I'm going to describe what we're doing here and what these vulnerabilities are. So we have the Zossi MVR. It's out of its case. It has its Wi-Fi access point. That Wi-Fi access point is created using a serial number, NVR, then a long serial number. The cameras here then connect through to that using Wi-Fi with a fixed password of 12345678. So they're kind of prepared in that respect. They know that password, they connect through to it. It's very easy for us to get that password. Now the NVR is connected with an Ethernet cable through to this USB Ethernet adapter. And my virtual machine is acting as a normal home router for this MVR. So it's connected to the internet now through the Ethernet connection. This is a standard deployment of this system. Now it would be normally connected to your home network. Now all I've done is I've plugged it into the network. I've got the camera displaying on the screen. I've got everything working. I've configured it as a normal user would do. I've not been asked to set any passwords. I've not been asked to change any passwords. And I've not been told if this is going to connect to the cloud or not. Now I'm going to describe to you two issues here. Now the first one requires you to be within the locality of the MVR. So you remember how I said this creates this access point that's got this long um, SSID that's the serial number of the device. It's got a fixed password of 12345678. Now we're just going to jump through to this Ubuntu virtual machine and we can see here I've already connected to that network. So that MVR821, I'm already connected to that Wi-Fi network. So now if I do if config, you can see down the bottom here, I've had to set a manual IP address in the 192.168.147.123 range. It's it doesn't do DHCP, so you have to know that range, but this is this is a minor barrier. Now what I can do is I can port scan the MVR. I'm connected as if I was a camera. So what nmap 192.168.147.1 and you can see that port 23, Telnet is open. I can then telnet to the device. So I think you can probably see where this is going. I get asked for the name, the login name, root, and the password, which we've already found out, is blank. So now I'm on the MVR. I can, I can see how it works. I can see what's going on. I can look at the interfaces on it. So I'm running if config, and you can see we've got WLAN 0. That's the one I'm connected to, that 192.168. 147.1, but we've also up here on F0, the wired interface, we're connected to the user's home network, 10.42.0.85. So my range there is 10.42. So now I can do ping 10.42.0.1. I'm now pinging the user's home router from the MVR after I've connected with a hard coded SSID. The thing is, as well, can now access the internet through here. So essentially, as an attacker, if I'm in Wi-Fi range of your MVR, with the password that was easy to guess, I can now connect to your MVR and use that to attack your home network. So that's the first issue that I found. I think this is pretty bad, that open telnet, the hard-coded Wi-Fi password, it's just a general lack of security. But I think it gets worse. I started to want to look at the cloud connected aspect of this system. So there's an Android app, there's a Windows app, and then there's something called Web AVSS. Now they all seem to use the same cloud system. What I've done is I have a Windows virtual machine here. Now Web AVSS is a bit weird. You start a, a binary and it actually runs Nginx on your local host. You connect to it with a web browser, local host on port 4200. You do have to sign in, so you do create an account with this. Now, you have to add the device, and to add that device, you need the serial number of it. So it's that long, random-looking number. So I'm going to press um, plus there to add. Then I am going to choose a device type. It's an MVR. I'm going to call it test. The device ID is that long, random string, so I'm just going to take that. I'm going to paste it in there. The device password, 
Now I wasn't asked to set a password when I configured the DVR, so the device password there is blank. The channel number, it has eight channels. I don't know if that matters, I've only got one in use. I press submit. It will now add that device to the system. So we've added a device. So you can see I've got test there. I expand that out and we've got our eight channels. Now I found it a little bit flaky, I'll be honest. If I press connect with channel, there I am. So there was no pairing process. I didn't need to go to the DVR and say, yes, I want this other person to connect and view my footage. It just added it straight away. The password by default is blank. So I'd wager that most of these devices that are sat on the internet, the password is going to be blank. So all you need is that serial number to view someone's CCTV footage. But, you know, we look at that serial number, so we go to device manage here, and you can see there it's quite long, it does look quite random. So how are we going to find those serial numbers? How are we going to enumerate those serial numbers? Well, it turns out that's quite easy as well. Now, you may have heard of Wiggle. Wiggle is like the Wi-Fi search engine, so you can search by SSID, MAC address, and so on. And all I'm going to do for the SSID or network name is do MVR, wildcard, and then a string ending 1A. I press query, it goes to the Wiggle database, and we can see we've got 532 NVR showing up straight away. So you can see the serial numbers there being listed. They all follow a similar format. There's lots and lots and lots of them. Some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. I don't know if they're all connected to that same cloud system. But there's one there. I mean, that's quite clearly a similar format to the one that I've got. I press map, I can see that that's somewhere in Russia possibly, you know, we can see where these are. So we could theoretically go to that property, connect to the Wi-Fi network and then access the network it was connected to. Most home users don't segregate their IoT from the rest of their network. So what could you do with that? But also we can view the CCTV cameras connected to it just by knowing the serial number. Now Zossi's response has been terrible with this. They, they just haven't, they haven't admitted that there's a problem here. It's the user's responsibility to change this. Now, I haven't looked into this in any more depth. Again, when we look at cloud systems like this, it's common for us to find other vulnerabilities, things that allow us to bypass the login, things that allow us to get shell access rather than just viewing the video. It's a lot of time and effort. I'm not giving these guys a free pen test. I've found security problems. I've tried reporting it to them, and they're just not listening. So it's with that that I've taken the decision that I'm going to disclose these issues. They've had a good amount of time to respond to them. They don't seem to want to do anything about it. And I think the best course of action is to tell users, inform users now that they should not connect these to their home networks, that they should set a password in them. These things need to be held to a high level of scrutiny. And this is just an incredibly poor device. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you agree with me that these issues are fairly serious and that, I, that disclosing them is the best path forward. Thanks for watching. Press like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in a few days. Thanks.